I run across the gym and it smells like old sweat. And I see the steps in the back and I gather my breath and I take a step up and I open the creaking door and there is Mrs. Hansen waiting right there for me for my weekly drum lesson. And I play it on and on and she nods and at the end says, I think you should do lesson five again. That's week six on lesson five. And as I'm standing there appreciating this, I'm thinking, I feel her peer and pierce my eyes with hers. And she leans over and says, Anne, I don't think music is for you. My body freaks out, my eyes well with tears, and I take off running home, wiping away all of the tears so no one would know. Fortunately, we move to a new state, new school district, new teacher. But I decide to play the flute. Not sure what I was thinking, because the same code shows up. And here is Mr. Mueller waving his baton in December. And in the middle of the concert, he cuts me off. And I have failed again. That Saturday, I vowed to read that code. You see, I think we might have a faulty view of skills and knowledge and the how of teaching. Only from my, my experiences, I've gained this. And it had I listened to those two teachers, I wouldn't be here today in my 29th year of teaching music education in public schools. Thank you. So I become the queen of the code. I practice thousands of hours. I can read any music. I make top honor groups in the state. I play the top ensembles at the university. And people come up to me after the concerts and say, you are so creative. No, I'm not. I am serving the code. That code owns me, and I can read it well. That conductor tells me what to do. That black note on white paper tells me what to play. I am not creative. See, creativity exists when we ask someone to create, not just replicate something. I was in this astounded state of people thinking that I was creative, and I didn't understand that until a graduate class in a summer, where I met a beautiful weaving. You see, I believe that through the creative process, skills, knowledge, and aptitude can be gained. And I didn't understand this until I experienced it. And here, this concept of creating the code started in my life. Here is the very weaving from 30 years ago where we looked at this and the teacher threw this out in front of us and said, this is your final exam. I'm a code person. That was not my code that I had learned. And I began to panic and she said, what? I said, what do, you, what do you mean? It's a final. You will compose to this and this is your score. We sat there in silence looking at that. Dead silence. Until finally someone said, you know, I think I see a diamond in there and that diamond has four sides and I believe that could be a great four count pattern. And from there, the interaction with our knowledge and skills and this weaving, we started to compose. You see, we sat with that, that creative process where it allowed us to get the ideas and the skills, let them incubate or marinate a little bit, if you will. And then we gained knowledge from that and insight. And from there, we actually elaborated and assessed it, and assessed it and elaborated until we came back to creating a composition. That was the first time I had ever owned my own code of learning. And I learned it through this process. I do believe that through the creative process that we can get students to own their learning, just like I had learned. In my classes in music composition, I might ask the very question of, so what rhythm do you want to start with? And they will write dots and dashes of their code. And with the dots and dashes of their code, then they will look and they'll say, hmm, I wonder what note that might be. And then we start to assign value to it and put in a traditional notation. They throw ideas down, throw them out, write them in, elaborate and create on computers their beautiful compositions that they are using. And this is the ownership of learning through this process that is so fantastic for them that it creates a synergistic feel. And I know that creativity is in every single student, but I have to pull it out of them because I think we might have created in society a fixed mindset about creativity in that you don't know the code, you're out. Or here's your A, you don't have it memorized, oh, you're out. Or, oh, you're not a genius and you didn't paint the Sistine Chapel, goodbye, you're out. Or it takes too much time. The reality is creativity is everywhere for us. And it's found oftentimes in all subject matters, 
even in the scientific method and process, in math, determining how many ways we can get into an actual answer, and the discussion of it. We can find this also in all the digital tools that we own today. And in fact, most of you are carrying a live orchestra in your back pocket or purse, and that orchestra is waiting for you to create. That's a lot of people supporting your creativity. These digital tools really do put the experiences live in our hands, and these are the agents of change that are gonna allow us to have true understanding of the how of learning and what is next. I see this in my music composition students, where they throw ideas into the pieces, into the computer, and then they pull them out, and they trial and error over again, and they notate and discuss it and share it back and forth, until they feel like they've composed this phenomenal piece of music. But it's that tool that allows that immediacy. I also see it in my steel drum ensembles, where ideas are flying in sound across the room. Let me tell you, that's a lot of noise coming at you once. But I do know that the synergy of that gets us to perform at great locations in public venues and on live TV. And people are amazed at them, like, how did you get to do that? And I said, well, it's not me. It's them. I'm pulling from the creative process. That's the important part. And from this, they develop their aptitudes their aptitudes and understanding of what they can do. In my music composition students, or of my classes this term, there are 58. I surveyed them at the beginning, and I said, how many of you think that you are composers? Five raised their hands. That was my job, to close that gap then, to let them know that they can be composers, that they are composers. 57 now think they are. I'm still working on that final one, but I'm gonna get that person. You see, I believe that all students should receive all subject matters in all schools so they can learn and grow and decide and determine their aptitudes. Sadly, we often arm them with only single subject matter, and as a result, they have to try and choose a major at college when they've only been to a career fair and they're not sure what to do. So how can we develop that aptitude? It reminds me of a student who walked up to me last year at graduation and said, "Miss Fennell, had I not checked Music Composition 1, I would have never known that I loved music. I would have never known that I am a composer. That I am a composer. I dream of a world where what we value in education matches what we teach and how we teach and that the creative process of learning drives our desired outcomes so that all students can truly own and know their codes of learning. And now I would like you to follow me and play a little percussion ensemble with a little bit of code. Are you ready? This group over here, clap, clap, and it's code right there. You can see that code, yes? Awesome. Look what you're playing. You are very talented. And this group over here, we have a rest, rest, hit, rest, rest, and really nail that chest. Here we go. There you go. You got it? Yes. That's what you're playing. There's your code. Keep it going. Create to innovate. Create to innovate. Create to innovate. Everyone, join me on your laps. Here we go. And. Give me a drum roll, and thank you very much. Thank you.